meeting, uh, meeting number three, working on uh, Rockstar Lawyer. So, so anyway, okay. Um, chapter eight is is almost complete, and uh, or it's getting there, okay. And uh, um, now we're going to talk a little bit about mentors, and I don't have that. Okay. And for those of you who don't know, I'm Greg McIntyre, I'm Lawyer Greg, and this is Robert uh, Ashford, and uh, he's uh, really, really helping me um, to write and research and develop out the concept of rock star lawyer, um, omnipresence, uh, the entire mentality and strategy uh, being a rock star lawyer and taking your law practice, business, whatever you are, an entrepreneur, to the next level. Um, and very happy to be working with Robert. He's uh, very good at what he does. There's talent wherever you look, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Wherever town, wherever town, whatever town you live. I'm just going to sign in every night just so I can make sure I'm on the right page here. Mentor. You had a question about mentors. That's kind of where we're going to kick it off. Mentors. The thought is that you should always have one. And we'll develop that. There's a reason for that. Although I know it all. <laughs> Ask anyone. Even you have mentors. Dude, even I have mentors. Okay? So, um, what was your question about mentors? The question was, how do you find, how do you know the right mentor. Yeah. I mean, how many know what to look for? Let me ask you this. Mentor? I was squishes here. I'm going to try. How, how many mentors should you have? I, I guess as many as it takes. Um, there's going to be different different areas that different mentors are going to be experts in and are going to be able to help you in those different areas. One's not going to do it. Yeah. What if, what if, what if, yeah, okay. I would have thought maybe not. It depends on what your specialty is, I suppose. Here's a, okay, another question. Should they all be attorneys if you're a lawyer? Should they all be stockbrokers if you're a stockbroker? No. I think not. No, I don't think Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's, a, there's a book called that's On Writing by Stephen King, which is a ridiculously good book, On Writing, okay? I'm you have to get that. If you haven't read it, read it. On writing by Stephen King. It's very autobiographical about his life, but also talks about his writing process, process. And uh, when he's writing, he's always reading. And King's a big advocate, and he's very prolific. So King's a big advocate also of, uh, of well, he's the job for it. He goes to the same place in his house every single day in the morning and writes till like noon, okay? And then he'll take a break and play with his kids, do whatever, take a nap, whatever in the afternoon. And then he reads at night, okay, right. and in the evenings. So, and he's always reading. And he's like part of you know part of being a good writer is, be, is reading, right? And and he, he also reads things that are outside of the things he likes mm -hmm. or his genres. You know what I mean? Right. On purpose, okay? Right. Because you know his twisted little great evil genius writing mind. You know what I mean? <laughs> that he has will take some crazy other thing that he's reading. You know, and combine it with his other ideas over here, and that's the way he gets brilliant ideas. He he says, is meshing these things together, right? And getting outside of your comfort zone. How I think that relates to mentors is it's the same thing. You can uh, you so pick and choose from different indus industries. Okay, for instance, um, I was really really looking for a legal product out there. Okay, to meet a need in the legal industry that. Where I had this in my mind's eye, I can look at a timeline and I can see where a case is on the timeline. If if we can put a car together with ten thousand parts as a people, okay, surely I can draft a will on a, on an assembly line process or timeline, okay. Mm -hmm. And why is it there practice management software out there that allows me to do that? Well, there's not really any that I've found that, that is excellent with doing that. You can make task lists and other things, but really having having it laid out visually 
And I, and I came to find out, doing some research, well, actually, it was during a morning meeting, okay, that I said, you know, my dad was this, you know, talking about the cars, and then telling, you know, if my dad could use systems before there was really software doing it, or, or, uh, or then when there was software, project management software as an engineer, as a civil engineer, maybe building a plant or something like that, you know, um, then, of course, I should be able to put together an estate package that way, too, methodically, and price it right, okay? Right. And why is it there's something out there? And then it dawned on me, uh, I'm looking in the wrong place. Let's go look for project management software that engineers use. And I find that there's this whole genre of uh, project management and just, just plethora of project management. I'm just using the word because we're writing a book. So there's this whole, you know, cornucopia of, of uh, project management software out there um, for architects, engineers, computer software right. uh, engineers to manage projects, to price them correctly, to see where their margins are, to assign resources or people to, you know, which are people to them, and it'll automatically keep track of how much they're making per hour with the hours they spend on the, the project. And, and then you can create templates, so you can lay those over your files when, when you open them up as projects that you're working on for people. And then you're getting really scientific about how you're making your money, hitting your margins, and as a manager of a department, you can look at everything within your department from a broad overview and see whether it was green. You can set the program if it goes up one day past you to seven days past you, that, those timelines go yellow under that project. And right. Red if it's over seven, you know? And that way I can see where my problems are and really go say, hey, what's up with this? What's going on with this? As an office manager, you could manage a, a different departments that way. And that's how I think you would want to, uh, uh, science, that's how scientific I want to get at, uh, at producing our, or give, you know, producing our documents and, and, and leveraging our, our uh, delivering our services. And then we can start working on, uh, you know, a little bit, you know, and the quality control goes in there. Really, this all stems from reading about, is it W. Edward Demings? Do you know who Demings is? No. The Demings approach, okay? Demings is a, an American uh, business guy, philosopher, economist type guy, financial guy. Anyway, he, he uh, we study, I studied him in, in, in my MBA program a lot, okay, and in undergrad. Uh, I think with, with my my undergrad in business, it uh, essentially in the late '60s, early '70s, he went around to all the car manufacturers, okay, in the United States, mm -hmm. trying to sell them on this idea that you had to measure everything coming out of the assembly line, every part, every part of the process, every, and build systems, and, to, and constantly refine the system, okay? Well, American manufacturers weren't interested in doing that at that time, okay, or retooling anything. So, so you know who bought into his philosophies and ideas? The Japanese, okay? So he went to Japan, an American, okay, went to Japan, and got with that sounds familiar somehow. Got with all with their car companies, okay? And right. I don't I'm not sure who the first one that hired him was. Let's see, okay? Um, might have been Toyota or Honda. Uh, uh, Demings. Demings sounds familiar. And I don't know if you've mentioned it before. Maybe you've mentioned it before. W. Edward Deming, yes. So, Bureau of Labor and Statistics, sampling techniques still used by the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, the economics of the, for industry, government, and education, okay? Yale PhD. Statistical quality. Many in Japan credit Deming as the inspiration for what became known as the Japanese post-war economic miracle of 1950 and 1960, when Japan rose from the ashes of the war and became the second most powerful economy in the world. 
in less than a decade, founded on the ideas being taught. Okay, um, better designed products to improve service, higher level of uniform product quality, improvement of product testing in the workplace, and in research centers, greater sales through side or global markets. Okay, so not just staying within your own market. Right, uh, right. The, there's a great, huge Wikipedia content on this guy on, on Deering's. But let's see. I, I, I had the I had the years wrong. In 1947, Deering was involved in early planning of the 1951 Japanese census. <laughs> Japanese reconstruction efforts. Japanese. Sixty, the Prime Minister of Japan acting on behalf of Emperor, Emperor Hirohito. Then he continued running his own consultancy business. Anyway, long story short, American car companies would not buy into him, okay, and his ideas. The Japanese did, and that's exactly what, like a Honda or any of those cars, mm -hmm. is just built on that philosophy. Is the constant measurement of this, everything in the system and, and retooling. And improvement, constant improvement. So over time, you know, in a car, you get instead of lots of rust spots on cylinders or whatever else, or, or you know gaps between the the parts or whatever is going on, you just get them better and better and better, and then you get an engine that'll run very simply and easily for three hundred thousand miles, you know, or something like that, you know, very little maintenance. But now, you know, Ford, Ford quality is job one, <coughs> all that stuff, okay, is then coming around and saying, okay, well, you know, we gotta, we gotta get the program, okay? So, so, all that needs to be applied to the law too, okay, and then what you're doing, and I wanna apply those principles. So there's ways to do that as well, quality control. Um, but just placing everything on a simulated process that's measurable, um, and, you know, I'm talking about how I want to produce everything within my firm, and I haven't talked about a lawyer yet, right? Right. So you grab it from different mentors, different places. They don't have to be alive. You can read about them. Um, right. Yes. I call. I'll tell you something that happened to me today. I had someone call me that is one of the biggest attorneys, and how about runs the largest firm in North and South Carolina? Okay. What do you, what do you mean, Jules? <laughs> maybe. 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 I'm not going to mention his name right now. He will remain remain nameless. Right, right now, okay? Right. Yeah, that's a, that's a wise decision. You think so? Yeah. Is it a wise decision? I'm so a name dropper. It's like, it's right here. It's <laughs> I, would, I would wait and you don't want to put it out there if he's okay. uh, not on board. Okay, so so anyway, um, but, but so he calls me, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm standing in the clerk's office at, at a courthouse, okay? And, and, and he says, hey, this is da da, you know, his first name, last name, you know? And man, I about fainted. I was like, because this guy's such a big, you know, idol of mine, okay? Right. And, and what, what he's done with his firm, okay? And, uh, and he's like, oh, I was just calling you back. And I'm like, I told him, I said, man, I always fainted. I was like, I, <laughs> I told him that. And went and talked to him, and I think we're going to have lunch on Thursday, okay? I think cool. he's going to be in town doing something else, meeting with a group. And uh, and he said, you know, if that works out, we'll you know we'll, we'll just break out and eat lunch, and and if not, then I'll call you and we can lunch. You know, I'll have the whole Thursday to be clear. We'll figure that out, okay? And I'm like, cool, man. I'll rearrange my schedule. If I gotta come to you, I'll come to you. Whatever, whatever. okay? And tell him a little bit of what, what I want to talk to him about, okay? Um, That's cool. But he was like, you know, I was like, you know, don't worry. I said, treats on me and everything else. He's like, <coughs> and you know, I'm thanking him. Whatever. He's like, I'm glad to do it, okay? Because I think from his point of view. Um, maybe he wants to give back. I would like to think at that point, if I'm in his position, I'm going to want to give back to other people right? in my profession and, or whatever profession with expertise on how to grow a business and how to, you know? And I think people with that mentality, the entrepreneurial mentality, don't mind giving back or sharing ideas. Yeah. You know, revel in the yeah, success of others too. About the ones who, who do that and always and That's a whole mindset too from being an attorney, I think. Reveling in the success of others, because I think most attorneys have a hard time with that. Yeah, in my experience, how about that? That that you're not necessarily trying to help. Competition. That's correct. Every, you see, everyone is competition. I think. Okay, 
So that's a total paradigm shift or, or thought shift as well. Yeah. <coughs> it's not seeing others as competition. That's a good point. Okay. And that's another thought process, or that's another avenue we can explore as well. Okay. <coughs> but it is, it's, it's learning to not see others as competition. I mean, I'll tell you my mentality, I don't see it as competition. You know why? Because I dominate, I don't compete. But what I mean by that is not that everybody else sucks and I'm great, okay? I mean that I'm going to get out there and I'm going to work my tail off and get out in front of everybody, of my clients, and figure out a way to get to them. I just don't see anybody else doing it at the pitch or the level that I'm doing it, okay? Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but if there's somebody else that's, that's competing with me or whatever else, I, I mean, whatever, man, you know, I wish you a most success. And then, you know, I'm just going to stay focused on my goal and come up with creative ways to get there. So yeah, should you have other what? No, sorry. No, it's just uh, just going on from that. There's no point in seeing others in competition. It's not gonna. It's just gonna take away from your focus, from your your time. <coughs> which which all stems from where? What is that all? It's all in, to me. It's all energy. Right. And it's where you're gonna apply that energy. Right. And for me, I'm always gonna want to apply that energy in a positive way. Right. Yeah. Not not diverting it. Toward negative thoughts or actions, or yeah, because it's wasted. It's a waste of freaking time. That's right. And energy not help you at all. No. So I'm going to try to take that energy and direct it. Hey, man, this morning I had a radio show. Probably the best radio show we've ever done. I was mad about some things. I'm not lying to you. And I was, I was, man. I was, I was not happy. And uh, my, my one of my coworkers that was doing the show with me. Okay. We were kind of at each other, nipping each other a little bit, you know what I mean? So she was kind of fired up. Hey, we'll see you. We'll see you, Anna. And, but, but, uh, but because of that, it was literally one of the best shows that, uh, that we've ever had. Because once we said, okay, let's go, you know, this, then uh, let, let me make sure down a lot. Let me make sure she gets out safe to her car. Okay. So, um, I can't remember where I left off. I just had to make sure she got to a car, okay? Yeah. No, I was cool. Uh, where, where are we at? <coughs> we're at, are we at, um, getting to the point? Not seeing others as common. No, we passed the competition. We were past competition. I don't know what. <laughs> So, so essentially, um, <coughs> should you, and I was talking about the, the guy that called me and how, yeah. oh dude, I'm so, I'm so excited about that, okay? I mean, I guess that's the reach up concept as well. You're talking about the radio show. Oh, the radio show. Yeah, I mean, literally, one, once they said go on the radio show, and we were on, and we were kind of back and forth on an issue like for 20 minutes before that, okay? <clears throat> and and kind of, you know, frustrated, just tension. And then I used that whole frustration and everything else, that, the, the thing that I, I mean, I just directed it in a really positive way in the radio show, and she did too. And it was the best radio show we've ever done, ever, okay? That's cool. I mean, it was awesome. Because yeah. it's all about 
energy. So you don't want to waste that. You want to use it in a positive way, I think, as much as you can. Um, and just getting mentors, period. Don't be scared to reach out. I think, I mean, you hear about Steve Jobs. You had mentioned Steve Jobs before and some of the things, right? Yeah. And no matter what you think of Steve Jobs, I mean, the guy did a lot of things and just really never seemed intimidated by anything. That's the way I, I see him as just confident. He knew the way he wanted to do it, whether you agree with him or not. And if you read his biography, um, it talks about how he would call like the CEO of Hewlett Packard or something like that, right? When he was like nine or something, you know, and ask him questions and call him directly like at home or something, okay? Because he just had no fear, he didn't care, and when he wanted to call somebody, he would call like the head of that company, okay, or, or whatever. Wow. And that's what he would do. But most of us are scared. Why are we scared? Don't you think? Oh, most of us yeah. don't want to be intrusive or don't want to intrude. Don't want to. Yeah, yeah. You, I, I don't know if it's fair of rejection or uh, <clears throat> maybe we know our place. Whatever. Right. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dude, imagine if you could remove I all that. I thought of doing something like that. And doing that. It wouldn't really have occurred to me. Most of even, even when I was an adult, it most of the time it's an adult, you especially won't think of it. Yeah. I would have been thinking you know that my upbringing was, was probably along the lines of tradition. You, you know, you, you want to get in this firm, you go to the secretary at the front and make an appointment to yeah. the person next up. And you don't go straight to the top. No, you just go there. Yeah. So to get so, to get to this guy that called me today, okay, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna see Thursday if everything works out. Right. Yeah. Um, unless he watches this. No. Um, <laughs> I, I, to get there, you know, at first I called one of one of his businesses, okay, mm -hmm. and uh, no luck, couldn't get you know there. And so I called another business, and uh, I just said, look, you know, I want to leave my message. All right, he didn't check his voicemail. Okay, I'm just giving this message. You know, tell him to call Greg Knight, our 704 751 Okay, my, my cell phone number. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and he called me today. Bam. Go. And then I just told him, look, here's why I'm on the phone. Here's what I want to do. And he was cool with that. Straight cool with that. The more you, that goes with the now we do crazy shit as well. Okay, the more I can remove my inhibitions of calling whoever I want to call for the advice and the guy, uh, the better, the, the quicker I'm gonna, the straighter my path to where I want to be, if that's success and whatever that means to you, is gonna be. Yes. Yeah, the crazy shit chapter is, is, is coming along, that's quite fun. Yeah. So so maybe that's a, that should be an exercise there, by the way. And that portion kind of kind of goes along with that, with removing inhibitions. Right. You need to call like five people, okay? Write letters, call whatever, five people that uh, that scare the living crap out of you to try to approach, okay? Maybe it's the President of the United States. Maybe it's the Queen of England. I don't know. Whoever scares you, dude, man, you need to get on the phone with him. You need to get some uh, some response back and forth. It doesn't matter. I used to keep like a, a thing of uh, these note cards and stuff back and forth. Mm -hmm. Like the bigger the person, I mean, especially big people when I write, they write it back. And they'd always write back, and then I write them back. So it was like a competition back and forth. So you need to do that with five people. And then, and then see if, uh, and ask him to be your mentor. Dude. I mean, maybe, you, right. you know, right. just straight up, hey, I need, or just ask him the questions you have to ask. Like the guy I'm going to meet with, he knows the blind spots that I have about on the journey I'm going on and the transition I'm going through right now. He's already been there. He's already crossed those bridges. I told him that today on the phone. But that's what I wanted to do, pick his brain and wanted to ask him some questions. Like you've already crossed those bridges. I want to ask you some questions. <laughs> because I have blind spots and I want to know the answers. Right. Literally, I could just pick his brain and then just do what he says. What sort of blind spots? <clears throat> what kind of blind spots do I have? Well, what do you, what do you 
I mean, not going into detail, yeah. but is there something in particular that you're Let me challenging tell you what I yourself to Yeah, to sure. Overcome? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. So, so I want to know how to hire other attorneys, other smart business people. And I want them to stay with me. Right. And I don't want them to break, want to break away and compete against me. And what's the right way to do that? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. What, what's the right way to do that as I grow? And you know, will what I'm doing work by building up a strong, big office? in a smaller area, like a, a central hub, or do I need to move that to a big metro area? Right. And what are the advantages and disadvantages of both? Because I know this person started in a smaller area mm -hmm. and then moved the whole organization to a large area and grew it there, to a large city. Yeah. And what are the merits of both? Okay. See, I think I probably already know the, the answers to all those things. I mean, that goes along somewhat with the uh, dropping the raft story that you were mentioning the monks dropping the raft story yeah going from a small town to a larger one which which uh you may have got to a, a level in your town where you're the big guy but right the same mentality isn't going to get you to the top in a bigger city you're going to have to take on new challenges and per perhaps I don't know. Like, maybe well, yeah, probably, yeah, yeah possibly there's possibly. going to be new challenges yeah. certainly you know yeah yeah, yeah. And and, uh, and so, and I think I, I mean, if I were honest with myself, right, and I, you know, and there was no doubt there, maybe, maybe all the answers are right here, right here, maybe. you know, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. It's nice to see. It's, yeah, I, I would, I would say because every question that I just gave you. I have an answer for of right. what I think is the right answer right. that I'm ninety percent sure is the right answer. But it's still interesting to get others' points of view. Yes, especially those that have done it before you and gone before you. Yeah, and I think not just people who are attorneys. Absolutely. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Or 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 stock I mean, there's, whatever there's whatever a, you do. There's a, a, a marketing thing that. Um, where did that, the uh, fast food restaurants, the, the drive-throughs, that wasn't created from other fast food restaurants. That, that came about from banking. You know, uh, someone in the fast food restaurant yeah. saw a bank, saw the drive-through thing, and sure. took that. Oh, that'll work. And yeah. moved it into the fast food area. Absolutely. And, and of course, it was hugely successful. Huge, yeah. So yeah, so, so pull, pulling from different industries and different mentors, I think is is not is, is a smart thing to do. Yes, I know. I've read a book that this person wrote that I'm going to meet on Thursday. Okay, um, and in that book, he says that. Um, or how about I know? How about I know that he spent a heck of a lot of money, ridiculous amount of money on all kind of advice from all kind of people and programs and whatever else and systems that he could get his hands on mm -hmm. trying to solve the problem that he was trying to solve, which was to get from point A of traditional attorney to huge firm doing a certain type of law, okay, which he achieved. And probably most of the money he spent was, I wouldn't say it was wasted, but you know, you gotta get spent, but you gotta spend it to get there. Yeah. And you can't be scared to spend money. Yeah, you can't be scared scared to spend money on self improvement, business improvement, or going out there trying to get advice. Right. Because you know, unless you're in a huge firm, you're not going to have a partners board or meeting or, or board of directors of a large corporation and advisors and everything else. You're going to have advisors to the board. It's it's you, man. You know, if you're in a small or you and a few friends, okay. So you gotta train all the time. But how 
you know if you're looking at the original question different how do you know these, uh, yeah. different mentors whether they're attorneys or or not right how do you know if they're you looking can, you can you can research them i suppose but how do you really know i mean i suppose you don't until you really try it and see if it works yeah there's a there's a really cool book called the richest man in babylon okay and that has some good advice on this subject, right? And it's not necessarily about mentors, but it's about, there's this guy, and he gives, you know, he works very hard. He's actually a slave. And he makes, he makes a, a certain amount of money. And this other guy convinces him, who's not a finance guy, but convinces him to, uh, to give him his money and invest in this scheme, okay? And the guy ends up running off with his money and blowing it, okay? So he loses his right. money. So what's the what's the lesson there? To give your money to someone you don't trust. Yeah, you just give it to somebody who's an expert who's done it before who does a really good job at it, right? Yeah. So so you know, um, same reason this year I stopped managing my own e trade account. You know why? Because I'm not a stockbroker, man. I'm not Warren Buffett. You know what I'm saying? I'm an attorney. Okay. So I want to be really good at what I do, and I gave it to somebody else who's really good at that to do that job. Or for a day, okay, and that was giving up some control when you were part. Uh, that's part of growing, yeah, and that's part of a whole other chapter. Right? I don't know. Do you want to have something about that? Yeah, 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 yeah that's giving up control, control, which yeah. is hard. It's delegating. I just delegated that to somebody else, and I might give up some small fees to do that, okay, but in the long run, I'm gonna make a huge amount because of that. That's one decision right there. That will be that could be a story that you could. Uh, write out for that chapter that's right yeah and, and not only that but but you know I have this desire to perhaps and I always thought I'd own a bunch of real estate okay and I wanted to buy and I may have had a, the opportunity to buy uh, a uh, basically owner financing large apartment complex okay mm -hmm. where I just had to take it over that sign whatever okay and in the end I said, you know what, I'm not, and, and if I focus my attention on that and my time on that, I, I would get it, all right? But I ended up in planning for this year saying, that's off the table. I'm not even going to focus my attention there. Because while I'm over there trying to turn this apartment complex around and do whatever and, and make it work. Yeah. You're not, you're not, I mean, look, man, I'm more, than double, I'm more than double my best year last year, mm -hmm. okay? Gross. Gross revenue wise. Right. Am I going to be able to more than double the value of that apartment complex in one year? No. No. Hey, my man, Mike. No. And, and, but I could more than double my, my business again this year. Right. Yeah. So that's where I need to focus my attention on what I'm really good at. You know? Now, that might be a good thing to get that one day and have a property management company do it. But right now, my attention's not there. So you only have so much to. To go around, you know what I mean. I could delegate that, and I get it. Delegating it might work, okay. But really, it was just to me, too, too much of a. It, it was just too much of a stretch right now mm -hmm. that I wanted to stay focused, you know. So, so yeah, I think. Uh, how do you know what's right? You, the right mentor, just just like the richest man in Babylon, um, who ended up after that, you know, investing all his money with partners and with people. Who, who really were experts in what they did and knew what they were doing. And, and then um, for a mentor, it would be with somebody I think who was very successful who had done it before, okay? But success doesn't always mean money. No, that's very true. I mean, you might need somebody who helps you work through fears. Yeah. Which that's kind of where all that trust stuff we were talking about last time, all the hokey stuff we were talking about last time, mm -hmm. that's where all that comes from, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. It's fear, okay? So you might have somebody who helps you work through that or who's a little bit of a guru, you know? I work with a guy who's uh, Bob Demers in Charlotte, North Carolina, who's a, who's a bit of a guru. He's not just a business coach, but the guy's literally uh, more of a philosopher, okay, uh, than, than anything else. And uh, I love getting a different point of view from Bob on decisions because he'll think about it a lot of times in just a sideways, backwards, or totally different angle than I'll think about it initially, okay? 
and it makes me examine it from a different point of view, which is very can be very enlightening. Okay, yeah, and allow you to either solve problems or see them as not a problem at all. <laughs> you know, so yeah, that's that's important. So 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 the people that I work with are not necessarily the right mix of people, but uh, but they're all different. In constant reading, I read all the time. People, you know, you need to be reading all the time. Or listening to an audio book or something, you know? Because I need fuel in my, I need gas in my tank, man. Like, I don't have enough internally. I do, I mean, I do to keep it going. I, I mean, I do to keep it grinding, just to grind it out all the time. But I just need to keep putting new stuff in. With like yeah. that short circuit with it. You ever see that one? I believe I need input. You remember that? He comes alive. It's the little robot. Yeah. 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 Need input. Yeah, he comes alive. Johnny Five. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. Number five. Number five. Yeah. Number five. And he needs yeah. input. You know, I just need input all the time. And and it's just weird. The more input you you have, the more resources you have to draw from. And you're you know you'll connect the dots on a lot of things. So the more I can get, the better. So, like, you know, with, with someone who doesn't really care a lot about monetary success, I mean, they might have a nice home, nice everything else, but, but you can certainly learn from somebody like that as well if they're a mentor in a different area other than just making billions of dollars. You know what I mean? So, it just depends. Yeah. So, anyway. You know, but you gotta, I guess it, you gotta know where you're looking for advice and what you're looking for. And seek it from someone who's proven successful in that area of what you're looking for. What was that uh, Stephen King book called again? Own Writing. O N Writing. Great little book, man. Quick, easy read. Great book. Really interesting. I mean, I've got a I'm, I've got a book out right now that's well, it's being edited right now by five of my very academic friends. Okay, that I mailed it to. Yeah, I just mailed them a, a paper printout copy after I completed. Uh, and that's that's straight out. That's what Stephen King does. So he'll finish it. He'll just vomit out a book. Okay. Right. Get it to where it's readable. It's incredible how quickly those guys can do it. Yeah, well, he does, he's not he's not caring about the facts or the the science or anything else on the back end either. Right. That's researchable afterwards, right? Yeah. So he's you know getting the book out on paper and then sending it to five of his friends, you know, that help him, and they'll with a pack of red pens and they mark it up. I put that a cover letter and uh, a pack of uh, like five. Pins that I had a rubber band of red pins, and then uh, a self addressed stamped envelope back to him and asked him if they could review it over the next couple of weeks. And I fully expect it back in like 10 more days. So, so you know, hopefully I'll get get those back shortly, and you know, I'll get to read all their advice and whatever else, and I can pay attention to or ignore whatever yeah, I want. That's a really good idea because it can take you in a complete or not a completely different direction, yeah. but it can, it can certainly bring in new stuff that you wouldn't expect to be putting in. And then get, and then get all that back, right. incorporate what changes you want to, right. yeah. edits, deletions, additions, it's whatever. Bound to make it a better book. Make it's it the best book it. possible, right? Yeah. And, and then, uh, and then uh, take it and uh, trim the fat. That's what it does next, is it'll trim out what, what doesn't need to be there, make it a really lean, nice book. Right. And which is scary because one of the last few King books I read was The Dome, and it was like a thousand pages and something. Okay, <laughs> it was over a thousand pages. It was ridiculous. But it doesn't have to be necessarily a huge book to be really good. It doesn't have to be the, the information. Dude, Gatsby is as like, long as the Gatsby is like, a brilliant book. Yeah, this was like that. Great, yeah, the great American. Probably one of the 
earliest recognized great American novelist of all time. That is recognized as possibly the, the greatest American novel ever. Um, that and um, Catcher in the Rye. Good fights. <laughs> Not big, not a big one. I mean, I do like the old classics. I like, I, I wanted to read Moby Dick. Yeah. But I've not, yeah. I've not got through it. I can never get into it. It's <laughs> so, it, it's just, it's almost too much. I mean, yeah. it was probably great in those days, but. I remember, yeah. Was, I, I got through about half of it and just had People, I've heard a lot of other people say that that's just my favorite book, that's been inspiration. And I'm like, the man, oh, the I just don't get it. The man, the well. Yeah, go watch the movie. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I need to go back and reread it. Maybe I'll take something more from it now. But uh, you know, but Gatsby though, you read that one, man. Yeah, that's and the way he wrote, movie. man, F. Scott Fitzgerald, it yeah. was just ridiculous. Raging alcoholic, apparently. Okay, died of alcoholism at a fairly young age, but uh, like thirties, forties, early forties. Gatsby was a writing thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least he didn't blow his head off like anyway. Uh, or not, you know, I guess, no, never mind. He only shot a shotgun in the chest. I knew he committed suicide. He stopped shotgun in the chest with a shotgun. Which is kind of like maybe somebody else shot him, but that's a hard suicide. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, there was a, a quote that I. But he writes the. When you read it, it's like. Uh, it's just like. It's a, I, I, I remember this, Gerald. Yeah, when I read back, I mean, I read it when I was younger, and I read back a couple of years ago and reread it, you know, uh, Gatsby. And uh, I read that one last year. It was just, it's like, I remember thinking to myself, I, I'm, uh, you know, I, I suck at writing. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was, th I was thinking, because it's like, I can't believe he can put words together that well. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's, it's just amazing right. um, how well he put it. How well he wrote it. Yeah. Um, maybe it was a, a drunken haze. I don't know. Maybe it takes achieving that level. I don't know. But anyway, he got there. So, uh, but yes, mentors, extremely important. Alive or dead. Yes. Yeah. And of course, if they are alive, you don't have to actually meet them. They can just be. Someone you study, you study their methods, study their you might go research, on whatever. Lawyergrade.com and uh, exactly. and watch the exactly. series of videos, or exactly. log into Lawyer Lawyer Grade University. I mean, I like looking at um, people such as Branson. I find Branson fascinating. He's just I, I read you, such an I, read, I mean, the, the quote about uh, make your goals impossible or something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. That was the gist. That way you can catch up with them or something? Yes, that was that was. Or they can catch up with you, something like that? Exactly. Something. Your accomplishments can catch up with you or something. There was also he had an awful lot of no shame. Well, that's another guy who has no sh I mean, just like no sense of no boundaries. No yeah. boundaries on himself or what he can accomplish or anything else. Right. He talks about budgets as if they're like foolish. <laughs> I've heard yeah. him talk about that, about about budgeting. And that's what you know. The oh yeah, it's so dream big by setting yourself seemingly impossible challenges. You will then have to catch up with them. Catch up with them. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a very interesting guy. He's a very interesting guy. And he doesn't do it the way a lot of people do it. I mean, it's not that. That's one of the things that we are going into in the book is. You don't have to follow what everyone else in your industry is doing. It, it doesn't always, just because it's always been done that way, doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. Yeah. Basically. So, and so don't don't assume that people that are older than you um, are necessarily doing it the right way, because they're probably right. just doing yeah, it the exactly. way somebody else told them to do it. Too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What was that quote? It was a, it was a great one I have somewhere from France and it was something like um, don't do it the easiest way or the cheapest way make sure you do it the most amazing way it was it was he doesn't great care. Quote. I, I can tell you I mean I'm telling you he does not care about money no he was, he was standing on top of a, a, a Boeing 747 at the time yeah I think with an umbrella waving it bringing in Virgin Airlines or something 
Yeah. But yeah, I like to. I like to. I mean, obviously, you don't want to go overboard with quotes from one person. And yes. You know, there's, there's and he's British. And he's British. And he's British. And he's British. Yeah. yeah. But of course, there is Elon Musk. He's, yeah. He's another great. He's got fabulous uh, quotes. Yeah, but he's like uh, he's rounded out the British to do him. They settled Britain and South Africa. <laughs> We've got Steve Jobs in there. <laughs> Who else have we got? Well, there's going to be others as well, I'm sure. I mean, South Africa, British. <laughs> Australia, British criminal. <laughs> That's right. I mean, come well, on. yeah. I know what you mean. You know what I mean. Yeah. All right, so. Love Australia, by the way. No, I've never been there actually. Yeah, it was your penal colony there for a while. That's, That's what funny. it was. My sister lived there for a couple of years. I mean, well, it was the it was the Empire's penal colony. You know, that yeah, nasty place. Yeah, that thing. Yeah, but I mean, it's turned out okay, I guess. Yeah, everyone's yeah. flocking there now. Yeah. He said, by showing yourself to be an innovator in your industry, you will attract other elite thinkers to your firm, which in turn will take you to another level. That would be nice. But I don't know, as, as you mentioned, what you do then with regards to keeping them. I suppose you, as long as your innovation keeps going and building and you show that your whole Dude, firm is innovative. It just depends. I mean, yeah, that maybe. Maybe. Is that how Apple did it? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Talk about Jobs. Jobs was a control freak. But he, he also was... thought so differently than everyone else. I mean, when he when he was fired, the company didn't keep going up. It no. leveled off until he came back. It was tanky, yeah. It was a toy. Yeah. Good and bad. And meanwhile, he produced what? Pixar, Pixar and Next and and became the largest private shareholder of Disney stock and Disney bonds. Yeah. Yeah, I would say he had, a, he had a unique touch. Very innovative. No doubt. Got along really well with, well, I don't know if that's the right term. He knew how to make creative things people produce. How about that? I don't know if that's good. He didn't right. I don't think he cared about getting along with them, okay? But, right. But yeah, he knew how to make them produce or make them. Made them. And probably making them stretch, you know, setting impossible goals. Yeah. And never compromising. Yeah, making them the best they can be also. And never compromising on whatever they need to be better. Yeah. You know, silly things like at the time, like fonts, different fonts for the Apple, the first Apple. That was the first, first company that had done that. That was the difference in that. No one else had done it. And there, and which became the whole basis of word processing and how we do everything. Right. Imagine it without all the different fonts. And everything. Well, he said in a speech, it was because of a, a, a calligraphy class talking about different mentors or different places you pull things. Right. From a calligraphy class that he audited, I think, at Reed's College. Because after the first yes. year, he dropped out and just kept going to class every once in a while. That's right. Dumber classes he wasn't interested in. Yeah. I'm trying to tell my son that, but I don't think he really gets all that. <laughs> my son Jordan, my oldest son, about how it's not, he thinks that life's just about getting the best degree possible from the biggest university. That's how we've made life for a lot of kids. Yeah, that's what they yeah. think. Yeah. That's what they're manufactured to think. That's what they're they assist for. for. Yeah. yeah. Which is. I mean, you know, taking a year off after high school and maybe, I don't know, going around the world or something like that, you know, um, just yeah, going to bring life experience. Yeah, it would, would, would be more beneficial. And then going and hanging out and auditing classes at Reed's College or so, you know, those things, you know, that's what makes you. Um, maybe well, that's that's the two, maybe. two most successful business owners in the world both dropped out. I mean, 
Jobs dropped out, Gates dropped out. You're forgetting Mark Zuckerberg, he did the same thing. Did he drop out as well? He's a Harvard dropout, yeah. Actually, made Facebook the beast that one still found out after like the first year or so. He did that for the university. Right. First. I can't, I can't remember if Musk dropped out. I know he's, he's um, extremely intelligent. Yeah. He was just able to, you know, read the year's, the year's uh, syllabus in a week. And yeah. know it all, yeah. remember everything that he's read, which is quite quite something. Because us, the rest of us, <laughs> just studying, studying, reading over and over again, trying to get it into my head. Um, that matters. <laughs> I mean, seriously, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Jobs would tell you that. <laughs> would you? He, yeah, he, yeah, he would take retreats. And go, and like, just go away, walkabouts. <laughs> he was a child of the 60s. Thank you. Please get your best. But yeah, you know, don't, don't necessarily think you have to follow a path, I guess. I mean, the law was once an apprentice profession. Hmm. You know, that's traditionally what it was. You know, you go find an attorney and... London or whatever else, and try to get him to hear your town and, and try to get him to let you be his apprentice. You know, apprentice profession. Now you got to go through this formal education. And, but is that changing? I mean, I know it's, it's I think there's a shift. There's a movement. Certain, there's a shift. Yeah. Uncollege. Kind of an uncollege type movement. Yeah. Where, uh, I, you know, if I can put together a syllabus for my kids full of just things they can do in life and online. But can you can you actually do that as a lawyer without having a legal degree no. and still practice? You can't. To graduate from a uh, accredited law school, like a you know, you, from an accredited law school, or I suppose it'd be. The I same. guess you could go somewhere. You know, you could go to law school somewhere else and then kind of even in another country, I think, can kind of take the bar. But you have to have formal education, really, at this point. If there's a real argument why you need it, that's ridiculous. <clears throat> and maybe even counterproductive. I mean, do you, let, here's, let me ask you a question. Do lawyers have great reputations? Not necessarily. Well, I mean, the answer is no. <laughs> they have yeah. horrible reputations. So, it's not working. Yeah. It's not working. It's broken, you know? I mean, it's broken. I think so, the more you can. I think it's also the same with doctors. Doctors used to have very unique reputations, and they don't now. But I think it's been steadily falling. Right. I think the, the medical industry is now recognized more as a monetary industry. Now. Or it's certainly getting that, seriously getting that reputation. Because it's been it's all about monetized <laughs> and, and, and made very corporate, right? Yeah. They're just kind of they're just kind of cogs in the machine now, the physicians, and a lot less of them, more physicians assistants and things, nurse practitioners. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, there's good and bad to making systems, and that's what I'm talking about doing. It's making systems and, and making something that you can scale as, a, as, a, as an attorney. But, uh, but yes, mentors, the more you can get, the better. Um, could you learn something from a bad mentor? There's a question. Can you, I mean, I think you I can mean, learn from anyone. Yeah, like, there's always someone. They're always going to be there to teach you something. Can you, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, can, you certainly can learn from your mistakes and others. I, I suppose a TV lawyer that comes to mind is that, that lawyer on Breaking Bad. Have you seen that? The, uh, Saul, Saul Goodman. Saul Goodman. I, I saw Breaking Bad. I thought it was a really good show. Yeah, I thought it was but, a great show. But yeah. the Saul, yeah. Better Call Saul? Yeah, I haven't really watched that. I haven't watched that. But yeah. I've watched was, a couple of the He episodes. was an interesting character in that. He was an interesting character. 
well, if you yeah, watch the Better Call Saul, be you'd be able to learn a lot from that guy as a lawyer. But would it be uh, useful all for you? Yeah, so it starts out that this Better Call Saul, the first few shows I've seen, you know, he's just like a, kind of a court appointed guy, you know, trying to get by, trying to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And it shows his like progression as an attorney over the first few shows. Okay, and uh, pretty interesting. And then he meets some of these uh, Mexican cartel guys and stuff and starts representing them in one of the episodes. So I think that was the beginning of going down the wrong road, okay? Not that you shouldn't represent people who do things wrong if you're a criminal defense attorney. That's yeah. going to be your job, okay? Yeah. But uh, maybe not. Try not to be corrupted by it. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's always a positive there if you look for it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to think if we've actually gotten anything to Toward mentors or <laughs> chatting back and forth today, but there is no, there is, there is. I think I think there's a lot of good uh, ideas and meat in there. There's some meat in there anyway that we can pull out. I'm going to try to pull a positive or a learning experience out of most everything. Okay, no matter what it is or who it is. Assignment. Did we give assignments the last time we yeah, met? That was that one of them was. Did um, I do mine? No. Um, you sent me what they were. Did I email it to? Did I put it in the assignment on my calendar? Let me see the calendar. I think it was in the other night. Maybe you did not. I bet I put it in today's my calendar event. And then I sent you an invitation to meet. But one of the things you were going to do was work on. Professional stories that could be used to personalize the book. Record a new lawyer life, which I did not do. Write something really personal to relate to the book or chapters. Write or talk about and film a chapter on system and purpose it. Can do a conversation with myself, point of view, and a traditional attorney talking about systems and processes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <sighs> okay. I'm going to carry that over. Mentor chapter. Um, I was going to do the second meeting transcription on this one. Let's see if I can get something else from the second the second meeting transcription for the. Introduction uh, chapter basically for the book. But um, what I'll do is I'll send that to you and see what you think, and we can then add to it and expand it. Okay. I'm going to. So, when else do you want, when do you want to meet next? Um, do, you, do you have time next?
next week, later on next week. Mm -hmm. And you can stick with Friday again, if that's good with you. Friday right, Fire? Yeah. Okay. No, no, Twenty first. Friday, Friday, probably not. Another time? No, you think it's going to sixth today. Doing the sixth? Can you do it fifth? Yeah, you can do it. Okay, you cool. That's all right, you. Yeah. That's fine, man. Okay.
get that up. I'll get the that up, and I'll get the, the one from the second one up. Yeah. Okay. From the last cool. one. Okay. I'll probably take out some of the dead spots. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Working hard on it.